The government's new migration strategy will have a major impact on the number of international students studying in Australia. And joining me live to discuss this is Universities Australia Chief Executive Katrina Jackson. What's your response to these changes? Now you've had a bit of time to digest them, Katrina. Look, 99-page document. Yep, we've read through the whole thing. Uh, now, Laura, look, uh, these are good changes. Uh, international students who are coming here for genuine reasons uh, to study at our world-class universities have nothing to be concerned about. Uh, from all the discussions we've had with government and from the document we now see before us, this is about getting to uh, students who might not really be wanting to be a student. They're actually after a job outcome instead and knocking off some of those shonky operators who are exploiting and taking advantage of students, and that's just not appropriate. So what happens with the so-called shonky operators? Essentially, you can sign up for a degree, you can pay, uh, you know, a lot more money for them, but you don't really go into to study and the course is not that uh, onerous on your time, but therefore you, you can work as well. Is that usually how it happens? So I suppose what, what's of concern here is students who sign up, say, for a Bachelor of Science at the Australian National University or they want to do architecture at, say, Melbourne University, uh, they come along and then they're lured by someone to go off and do something quite different, a short course, fairly low value and a skill that Australia's not really all that keen on. So kids come uh, with one set of intents and then they shift to something else. Uh, so there is loopholes that need to be closed. Mm. If somebody wants to come here to work, that's absolutely fine, but need to apply for the appropriate kind of visa. If you're coming here for a world-class education, absolutely terrific. You need to apply for a student visa and we just need to stop the loopholes so that people can come here with a different intent entirely from being a, a genuine student. Yeah, and, and how widespread do you think that has been in the past, genuine students and, and the uh, other... Look, I think we've seen a little bit of an uptick in the recent past, but the important thing here, the real breaker here, is the government seriously taking it seriously. They're looking at the whole migration system, the way all the visas work, just to, to make sure that it actually works properly and in the interest of the country. Get rid of this great class of people that are on temporary visa after temporary visa after temporary visa. That's not good for the country. It's not good for the students. Uh, what, what we can see from the education sector, from the university sector, is this is a set of changes that will simply make all the incentives, all the messages we're sending through the visa system clearer uh, and make the journey for students better. The changes to English language testing, the changes to visas, make their experience here better. And hopefully, Laura, some of those highly qualified kids will be able to stay on. A few more of them will be able to stay on and make a real contribution as citizens here with really high skills we really want. Yeah, absolutely. We need engineers. Uh, just for one example, there's plenty more we need as well. Katrina, we spoke a lot over COVID and how damaging uh, this was for the university sector for a number of reasons, mostly because students couldn't get here for, for two years. Has that recovery been completed or have we seen, you know, almost a, too many students returning, if I could put it so crudely? Absolutely. Laura, look, we've been discussing this for a long time, haven't we? Gee, it's nice to be out of those dark days when it students is. were forced to study in their basement in Beijing. Um, look, it's almost caught up, but there's a bit of a lag. And as you can understand, because some of those kids, as you've already said, weren't able to get here, there's a little bit of catching up to do. So for a while, the numbers will be a little bit higher because mm. there were kids who needed to go into their second or third year who deferred for a while. So there's a little bit of a, of a glut of numbers just from people who need to catch up to finish their degrees. That'll back off pretty soon. We're almost back to pre-COVID levels, but, but not quite. But we do need to just understand that for a little while, there's a little glut in numbers of totally genuine students who just deferred their degree because they couldn't get back here. Some things you just can't study online. So they needed to wait. So there are a couple of additional, you know, second years and third years who are catching mm. up with stuff they would have done, but COVID stopped them from doing it. Uh, Katrina, we've spoken a lot about this and I understand that you're uh, finishing up in the role by the end of the year. So this might be one of the last times we speak. Uh, you've certainly been head of Universities Australia at a very challenging time, a time that no one could have predicted. Uh, any regrets? Anything uh, you wish you could have done while you're in the role? Oh, you can always do more, Laura, but I'm yeah. really proud of my sector. I'm really proud of how they survived through COVID and not just survived, but thrived and really offered students as much as they possibly could. Students and staff transitioning those courses online, thousands and thousands and thousands of courses and really 
being really resolute and tough and just getting through COVID and now entering an era in which we've got a really enormous package of potential reforms on the table before us with the Accord, mm. massive opportunity. So it's t t terrific times ahead. After seven and a half years, it's time for me to pass the baton to someone fresh um, and I'm looking forward to, to new opportunities. So thank you very much for, for the, the loyal and really consistent coverage you've offered to us and the opportunities you've given me. Yep, it's really important and um, sometimes we didn't always agree, but it's good to thrash it out. <laughs> Katrina, uh, thank Absolutely. you so much for giving us uh, your time. Seven and a half years is certainly a, a very decent innings. We'll see you soon.